we moved over to a different site. You see money lay boulder bottom. You see cod swimming around. This is because it's at nighttime. The cod seem to come down to the bottom. What you're looking at in the foreground there is a boulder that's been rolled over. This is not a natural process. It's almost certainly uh, been dragged. That's why you're not seeing very much coral. You see that coral actually growing up from underneath the boulder. So we move to another piece of coral or another part of the seafloor. There's a lot more coral and correspondingly a whole lot more fish. Uh, one thing you notice when you out in the Bay of Fundy is tremendous amount of particles in the water. These coral need particles to eat. That's what they're eating. That's probably why they're so abundant here. And one of the few times we see some other associated sea anemones, and just up on the right of the screen, you see a cod, uh, not something we commonly saw, nestled in the, in the coral just like the redfish have been doing throughout this entire video. Well, we did 13 separate dives with this cruise and with this vehicle and the week we were out there. Every time we had to bring it up, when we brought it up, we had to bring it up because the uh, sample containers were full. See, gently putting it on the deck. Um, and here we have part of the scientific staff looking at some of the corals. Uh, the Preminoa coral, which is a hard coral, and the Paragorgia, or the soft coral. This polyp's still out even though it's back on the surface. And even in daylight, it's even more spectacular than when we saw it actually undersea. Uh, Paul Mortensen was a coral expert from Norway. He was temporarily working for Department of Fisheries and Oceans, looking at one of the specimens he hopes to grow back in the lab. And these are some of the shrimp that we got off, uh, one of the suctions from some of the strawberry corals. These are some uh, brittle stars that we brought up doing uh, surface surveys of their densities. On the stern of the ship, we're looking at uh, sediment. This is Sanford Atwood, the chief person on this cruise who showed us where all the coral were. We're going through the sediment here, sieving it to isolate some of the material. And here's students and postdocs looking at some of the coral we brought back. Well, one of the reasons we're doing this is because we're all interested in global warming. And is it really occurring? And if it is, how fast is it happening? And one of the big problems with determining all this is having a record that's accurate enough and high resolution enough from the ocean to see if what we're seeing now is something that's only happening now or it's happened on a yearly, on a 50 year time period, 100 year, 200 year time period throughout the last 10,000 years. And the only way to get that is with these coral because these coral provide us that annual record that we've never had before. It's like having a paleo thermometer going back several thousand years into the geologic record. And it's the only way that we're going to find out exactly what's happening with global warming.